I'm here today with Jamie McCullum. Jamie, you doing work good? Everything well? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. Thanks for having me. No, no, pleasure to have you here. Listen, motorsport, adventure, sustainability. How did you find your path to, to bring them all together and to get involved in all of them? Well, uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, an interesting story that uh, has lots of um, twists and turns in it and a few dead ends too. Uh, but the overall progression is forwards, I like to think. Um, so, so I started my career in uh, Formula One and I spent um, seven or eight years working um, on the circuit, um, traveling around the world, both with uh, the te- with teams, so with the Williams Formula One team, and then working for, for one of the drivers, Damon Hill. And then with a sports marketing agency, you know, IMG, International Management Group. So I and I was, you know, all over the world doing a, a variety of different things, mainly sort of comms, sponsorship um, and event management. And um, a, a, after that sort of period, I realized that perhaps that wasn't my calling in life. And I had a long and deep seated uh, love of nature. I mm. grew up in the, I grew up in the countryside. And um, but I realized that to radically change direction of my career, I couldn't just sort of flop into a new uh, a new direction. So I, I went back to uh, university and I did a Ph.D. in biology and um, which was a massive departure from the yes. from the edge of the racetrack uh, and um, three and a half liter engine. So so I um, I did my Ph.D. research on the U.S. Mexico border in the deserts. Um, and I was mainly looking at the movement of wildlife across the, the international border between Mexico and the US. Mm. Of course, um, there are a lot of other things moving across that border, m- millions of people every year. So it was a super interesting uh, from an environmental perspective, but also from that, that, that social perspective. And when I finished my PhD, I spent 10 years working in, in, in conservation Um mainly working in national parks, so protected areas, and working with frontline conservation workers, so rangers in many cases, um, on five continents. Um, and that's where I find myself today, still working in that in that space yeah. uh, and with the commitment to to nature and and it, the value that it brings to not just our economies but our, our wider society. And how how do you feel kind of talking about the wider society? We are, with respect to obviously climate change, deforestation, is there still more to go in terms of us being clued up? Are we still sticking our heads in the sand or kind of, or are we, are we starting to wake up? Yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a very good question because I think in, in, in some ways we are waking up. And I, and I think, of course, the, the 90% of the focus is on climate change and that's valid and important. Um, but I, I do think that uh, nature loss is getting left behind in that uh, discussion. Um, of course, they're both deeply interlinked. Um, but there's a, a great comment, which is that, you know, that climate change will kill us in 100 years, but nature loss will kill us in 50. So we better you know, start paying attention to that in a, in a more profound way. I mean, of course, we know we've lost half of all the forests um, on the planet in the, in, in the last 5,000 years. And and species extinction is happening at a thousand times the background rate. But we don't want to necessarily dwell on all the, the doom um, because but 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 the, the fact is that 50 percent of the global economy depends on nature, so dependent or highly dependent on nature. And when you're losing species and habitats at that rate, that is going to have an effect. I mean, it's a bit like I think about nature and biodiversity, a bit like a rug. You know, you pull one strand out. It's OK. The carpet and the rug stays pretty intact and you start pulling more out eventually the whole thing is like a sort of tattered mess and and all of the things that we depend on so you know it's it's clean air and fresh water and raw materials um fertility pollination services all those things that that underpin that 50 percent of our economy um start to fall away as well so um so we, you know, and, and then the link to climate change is, is critical because forests and oceans absorb n- nearly 50 percent of all the emissions that we put out. So the cool thing is, you know, we've got this really great resource, which 
is does almost all the hard work for us. It's proven and it's cheap compared to you know geo um, uh, geo technologies which are going to absorb carbon dioxide. So nature does most of this stuff for us if we just look after it better. So they're not separate, but but I think the focus is too much on just one of those uh, right. on, on climate change and not so much on the, the value that nature can deliver in in a whole host of ways. But do, do you think that we need systematic changes, or do you think kind of it's mo- it's tweaks that people the be- behaviors that we need to do? Well, I, I think uh, I think there's another exciting here, which is I think that businesses um, are a key part of the solution here, and I I think historically, and, and even cont- you know today, people think that businesses are uh, are the problem, and and I I have the opposite point of view. I think that businesses are central to the the solution. Um, I think firstly because they and so that's a mindset change. So in, in answer to your question, I think um, businesses can play a really critical leadership role in um, in conducting themselves in a way that is going to um, deliver positive change. And I, and I think that those businesses that do adopt regenerative practices will thrive in a resource constrained future. There's there's no doubt about it because. They will pay less for their for their raw materials, but but also they'll get better people. I mean, they'll attract the best talent and they'll retain that talent because if you're a purpose led company, you're much more likely, and all the research shows it, you're much more likely to attract and retain the best talent. So, so, so this sort of regenerative way of thinking is is critical because it means that the the, the, the the makes the business more resilient and more sustainable into the future in every sense, financially sustainable. So I do I believe that um, that businesses are, are, are critical to this future. Um, but I think you know, and the million dollar question or the multi million dollar question is is how how businesses yeah. will will do that. So let me let me take us back full circle. Kind of you start an F one how kind of and now you're you're in the environmental kind of deforestation kind of nature and you're in that sphere how is f how do you look back on f1 and how do you view f1 now is it kind of is it a beacon of hope or is it kind of your deadliest enemy um that's it's well i i think that what it shows is that when in the, in the 1960s and 1970s formula one and indeed sport more generally was a bit of fun it was mainly run by amateurs of course there was some money in football and and motorsport but but no real money and then the, then the sport was transformed by the injection of uh of of capital from businesses who who got engaged through sponsorship yeah and i think that is the the model uh, um that i that i think we need to adopt we need to get businesses engaged in business in in nature in the same way they got involved in sport because 60 years ago sport was a you know it was worth nothing the industry is worth nothing now it's a multi multi billion dollar industry mm. and 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 what has that done it's 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 cre- it's created a whole new uh, positive approach towards sport it's enabled sport to reach many more people sport is better communicated the health benefits all those other things so and i think the same needs to apply in in this one so i think that formula one and, and the sports industry in general is a really good example of how uh, of the power the, the positive power of business and i think that's the the model that we want to try and duplicate in this in this field jamie mccann thank you so much for your time today it's been absolutely fascinating great thanks very much nick